know a lot of shit. Like you even tease the schedule. Yeah. The new schedule that's about to come out. Yeah, we do got the heads up on the schedule. We tease the jerseys. The jerseys. Teams, NFL jerseys. Got that right too. Yeah. So we've been breaking barrier at CT ESPN. We want to be able to expose more. And that's what the brink trucks for. We want to pull up the colleges All and right. jump off with the security, the cameras. Jason got the camera and the mic and talk to kids and mm. get kids the exposure and uh get them the looks they need. That's tough. So are like leagues or like ESPN, the Bleacher Report, so they like ever reaching out to you to try to like collab or where you got your information from or even team up with you, period? Not or do yet. you feel like they're trying to blackball you in the media space too? Of course. They always try to blackball. I think ESPN lawyers sent us a letter was saying like, we were similar to what they're doing and we're not similar at all. Mm. So anytime you breaking barriers is doing something special, you know it's going to be adversity. And uh, we decided to uh, cover those bases. Wow, so ESPN hit y'all up with some infringement shit. Not infringement because we don't, we're not really copying them and we got lawyer and trademark as well. Yeah. So I think they just know our network has been creating a lot of noise, mm -hmm. getting a lot of energy and breaking a lot more news than they have been able to. Yeah. You know? Man, hey, it may be some smoke in the city with this one. So recently, and I came across this video earlier where, again, I think sometime over the last week, Antonio Brown was on uh, Say Cheese TV. Shout out to Sean Cotton talking about this whole CT ESPN situation. And I guess number one, maybe they got to get something straight. Hey, look, it, it seems like CT ESPN, although I'm not kind of a big follower, I do hear it around and kind of hear it being talked about, especially on interviews that Antonio Brown is on. But I, I don't think that they're breaking more news than ESPN. It seems like uh, Sean Cotton talked about it or at least hinted towards it uh, on his interview when he talked about that it may be a mole or a rat within ESPN, that company that's feeding information to CT ESPN, which appears to be owned. Maybe, maybe not. We'll pull up the paperwork here in a little bit by Antonio Brown and that they're breaking news uh, before ESPN gets a chance to break that news which maybe is causing some confusion. Now, again, if you don't know me, I am Dave, an almost 10-year intellectual property attorney dealing with everything from trademarks to patents to copyrights, NIL, trade secrets, you name it. If it's an intellectual property, a form of intellectual property, I deal with it. Now, it seems like in this clip, as you heard, Sean Cotton is asking, hey, is ESPN hitting you all up trying to get some type of collaboration going or are they trying to hold you guys back? And Antonio Brown, uh, he, he says, man, no, they're, they're, they they had their attorney. They're trying to hold us back. They're trying to blackball us. He talks about how their attorney at ESPN sent over, uh, which I would think would be a cease and desist letter saying, hey, you guys are infringing our trademark. And as a result of it, you guys need to cease operations or we're going to take further legal action. And I'm going to be... I'm, I'm going to continue to follow this because this may turn into something big and maybe a bigger headache than what Antonio Brown realizes or thinks he's into. Uh, Antonio Brown, again, I'm going to give it to him. He maybe doesn't know the IP landscape, the trademark landscape. And he tells Sean Cotton, hey, oh, well, we already have our trademarks, so forth and so on. And unfortunately, that's just not true. Let's, let's pull it up here. And I was actually wondering to myself uh, as I was coming across this interview and just hearing more about what Antonio Brown is doing with CT ESPN. And I was wondering like, man, does he have a trademark on this situation or not? So let, let's first pull up here. Again, this is the test database. ESPN, uh, if you go to the TESS in Google, it's going to pull up the test database. You click on that icon and this is essentially all the trademarks with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, you can look up and see what words, word marks, phrases, things of that sort is trademarked or is it registered as a trademark uh, with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So again, we're, we're, I just typed in in a general search CT ESPN. And as you see here, these are pending trademarks. These are not registered trademarks. And actually this one 
I'm going to set this one to the side because it says CTESPN. I'm not sure anybody who's using CTESPN outside of Antonio Brown, but it seems like the owner of this market, Jacobs, Andrew or Andrew Jacobs. And uh, so I, again, I'm not sure if this is associated with Andrew, Antonio Brown or not. I can't kind of close that loop. I would imagine that this and uh, Jacobs, Andrew guy or Andrew Jacobs guy is somehow associated with Antonio Brown. I cannot confirm nor deny that. Uh, but again, the fact that it's CT ESPN, I, I have a, hey, it's not too many people using CT ESPN outside of Antonio Brown or heck it's not anybody using CT ESPN outside of Antonio Brown. So I figured that this guy is somehow associated with Antonio Brown, but this is the big one. Antonio L. Ala Express Trust. And it's a Florida trust. And as you might imagine, this is CT ESPN. Again, it's a pending mark. Antonio Brown says on Sean Cotton Say Cheese TV that he has a register. He has his trademarks. And again, although you can get a trademark just by using the name or the logo or the phrase as a brand name, it is technically a trademark, even though it's not a registered trademark. As you see here, they kind of get off at the gas. For example, this is a registered trademark with the USPTO. It seems like CTESPN is a pending trademark and it's owned by Antonio L. Ala Express Trust. So just take my word for it. It appears that this trust is owned by Antonio Brown. I did some research beforehand. I'm not going to bore you guys with those details, but it seems like that Florida trust, Antonio L. Ala Express Trust, is linked with Antonio Brown. So let me stop sharing my screen. I want to pull up the actual patent application that was filed by the actual trust company. Because again, this is this this stuff is going to start to get uh, pretty interesting here. Let's go here. Let's go here. And this is why I mean you have to be careful what you say because all this stuff is really verifiable. This is not what I'm looking for. Let's see here. All this stuff is verifiable. So when you're saying some stuff on these podcasts on and he actually kind of spilled the beans unfortunately when he's when he talked about hey espn sent us a letter and, and again he didn't say what that letter is as an ip attorney i can get that that letter i can guarantee you it was a cease and desist letter saying hey ct espn is a friends and our trademark our registered trademark espn in the various forms of espn you have espn u you have espn fc you have espn2 all these different trademarks uh, that has ESPN in it that ESPN owns. I'm sure that the attorney sent with Antonio Brown. He uh, seemed to have admitted they sent them a letter saying that you guys are he oh, infringing their trademarks. He maybe didn't when Sean Cotton talked about him. When Sean Cotton talked about oh, so they're saying you guys infringe. He kind of pulled back on that, but I guarantee you that's what that was. A, it was a cease and desist letter saying that you guys are infringing our trademark. And remember, I and. Maybe before I say this, you guys have to let me know. The whole point of a trademark is to identify the owner of the services or goods that are being offered. So in this case, it seems like they're offering at least some type of uh, in podcast form or in some type of the media form. They're offering information as it relates to sports. Now, we all know, or if you don't know, you don't have to have the exact same wording to have committed trademark infringement is all about the likelihood of uh, likelihood of confusion so would the customer look at ct espn and think that somehow associated with espn regarding the services that are being provided in this case regarding sports again it doesn't have to be an exact copy or replication so and again we we're not talking about obviously a lot of people who may be listening to this video, as well as myself, I know CT ESPN. We all know that that's an Antonio Brown thing. But with the average consumer looking at this CT ESPN mark, what they think is somehow associated with ESPN. If yes, it's a likelihood of confusion and therefore trademark infringement. If no, it's no likelihood of confusion and therefore not trademark infringement. I want to let you, again, I'm going to pull up the application, the trademark application that Antonio Brown filed, but I want you guys to let me know in the comments, just at this point in time, do you think that CT ESPN is trademark infringement against the ESPN mark? Again, it doesn't have to be the exact same thing, but 
If it's causing a likelihood of confusion, obviously in this case, Antonio Brown has the letter C and the letter T along with ESPN. That's the differentiating factor is CT. And then you have the ESPN. Is that CT enough to overcome the likelihood of confusion and therefore not be trademark infringement? Or are you going to say that, yeah, I man, he has the letter C and he has the letter T, but it is still very close. And I think it is going to be a likelihood of confusion, especially they're in the same kind of class operating in the same class again you have to think when you file a trademark which we're going to see here in a second you have to file what class that you're operating in it can be in a media class it can be in a clothing class it can be in a music class it can be in a number of different classes and the closer you are to somebody who's already operating uh, or already has a registered trademark in that class the more likelihood is going to be that is going to be a likelihood of confusion and therefore trademark infringement. If he was operating this CT ESPN in automobiles, I can tell you it's not going to be trademark infringement. He's going to get the trademark on CT ESPN. If it were for it was in an automobile class, and he's not going to be held liable or be looked at as committing trademark infringement. But they're both in class 41, which deals with the media, which deals with a disseminating or distributing information as it relates to sports to the consumers to the to, to, to the mass to the media and it's obviously espn is operating in that same class for those same things and they have registered trademarks in that same in, in those class in that class 41 for distributing media uh you know to the world to the masses so given that the ct espn and espn is it a likelihood of confusion i can tell you that antonio brown and he may have some issues on his hand, but let's let's pull up the let's pull up the. Let's see here. This is a trademark application. So as you see here, this is the owner of the mark is again Antonio L. Ala Express Trust, you know, Florida Trust. What are they? What are they? This is class 41. What is the end of identification? The production of podcasts, movie production services, as well as production of music. Now Look, at, I'm not sure if Antonio Brown did this himself or he hired an attorney. Let's go. It seems like the attorney, he did hire an attorney. Andrea Gory, it seems like, is the attorney, and she is out of Arizona, it looks like. She's a uh, she's full-time. She's employed by Legal Force, which is interesting. But it, no, nonetheless, the USPTO, I can guarantee you they're going to have an issue with this very vague identification. Again, we're talking about the likelihood of confusion. Do you guys think that ESPN, the company that we all know that distributes sports information, do they operate in production of podcasts? ESPN, we all know, has a number of podcasts associated with the platform, so they're in the production of podcasts. Are they in a movie production services? I think they are also, also in the movie production service. You have also all the ESPN 30 for 30s and the movies, that are, I mean, this one maybe is a little bit more of a toss up. The production of podcasts definitely is going to be in the same squarely within the same class that ESPN works on. I guess the movie production you can have, uh, you know, you can you can lob that in there, and I think is that is maybe more of a toss up. And the production of music, I think at the end of the day, this is its strongest argument for being able to register the word CTESPN for the production of music. We all know that ESPN doesn't produce music, and I think. If anything, Antonio Brown is going to be able to get most likely a trademark for CTESPN, that wording in the production of music. Now, production of podcasts as well as the movie production services. I, I mean, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a stretch in, in, in my, my humble opinion as an IP attorney doing this almost 10 years. Again, it's owned by the trust. And that, that's the pretty much the, 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 the trademark application here. So, again. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to bring the screen back on myself. This was just, and I didn't bring this up, but this was just filed. When was this filed? This was filed May 14th of 2024. What is it? May 26th. So this was literally filed almost two weeks ago, 12 days ago. So almost two weeks ago, Antonio Brown has filed for trademark protection or to register his trademark with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. We just look at the looked at the trademark. I mean, a trademark application. And he's again on Sean Cotton talking about, yeah, we already have our trademark. And yeah, they're trying to send letters to us talking about you guys are, you know, we have an issue with you guys stuff. And Antonio Brown is just brushing this stuff off as if, hey, man, this is nothing. They just trying to blackball us. They trying to hate on us. I think he got a bigger problem than what he 
realizes, and I can 100% guarantee you if they continue to downplay the cease and desist letter, at some point ESPN will sue the Antonio L. Ally Trust. I can guarantee you that I'm going to be bringing you guys this to the extent that they do file that lawsuit. We will go through that complaint, and uh, it'll be interesting now. But, again, do you think that he's going to be able to register with the United States Patent and Trademark Office this trademark of CT ESPN specifically for class 41 that's dealing with the production multimedia uh, services, production of podcasts, which I think is going to be a big issue. He's most likely not going to get CT ESPN in that category because it's a likelihood of confusion with ESPN, which we all know is a big company, is a famous mark, uh, a world a renowned mark. So I think that's going to be issues again with the movie services, production of movies. He may have a fighting chance with that one. And with the music, I think that's going to be his production of music. That's going to be his strongest opportunity to get a registered trademark with CT ESPN. As we all know, even though ESPN has music on the platform, it, it, it doesn't produce music. It, I would imagine that ESPN is licensing that music from some type of individual artist or a clearinghouse and you know, playing it on their platform. They don't produce music. So I think that's going to be his strongest argument for getting the trademark CT ESPN registered with the trademark office, United States Patent and Trademark Office, the production of podcasts and the production of movies. I think it's going to be a stretch. I, th I think, again, hopefully this is a learning lesson for you guys. Before you guys start a business, make sure that that trademark, that the brand name, heck, even a logo that you're looking to have as part of your business is protectable. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where you are putting out content under this brand brand name in Antonio Brown's case, CTESPN, and all of a sudden you're committing trademark infringement and have to pay ESPN a lot of money, or you have to stop using that name and do something all over. Because I think we all know if he doesn't have CTESPN, I think he will still get some traction because he's Antonio Brown, but he's not going to get that everyday person who's thinking again in my opinion i think it's trademark infringement i think it's a likelihood of confusion again it doesn't have to be the same name espn and ct espn i think it's a likelihood of confusion it's very close they're operating within the same class so I, I, again in my opinion for the production of podcasts and as well as even movies i think it's in my opinion it's trademark infringement we'll see what happens when uh everything comes out because i can guarantee you that ESPN will file a lawsuit if he continues using this. He has Antonio Brown that being filed trademark applications to try to protect his stuff. I, I could bet you any type of money that he's probably not going to get these registered trademarks, these trademark applications or these trademark names registered with the USPTO for the production of podcasts as well as movies. He may be able to get something for production of music, but those other two. Probably not. So, again, let me know if you agree with me. Let me know if you disagree with me in the comment section. Again, I'll be following along with this one. And, uh, again, hopefully you guys got something out of this one because this one is going to get spicy. I can guarantee you guys that. All right. Take care. Peace.